Hey gamers, this is Jason, and believe it or not, I still think about what happened to the Deku Butler's son sometimes. Oh no. <laughs> and I'm tingle and ready to mingle. It's me, Patrick. Oh my god. Wait, you needed a, a funny intro. That's just you. That's not even a Zelda thing. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Welcome to RP Gamer episode one. Whoa, this Whoa. is not episode one. Welcome to RP Gamer episode two, a podcast about Legends of Zelda. I am super excited for this episode of our podcast because back in season one, episode five, we did something similar with the Final Fantasy series. Where we kind of took a deep dive. Yeah. And saw uh, the ups and downs of everything here. So this time we're looking at the high rules and low rules of the Legend of Zelda series. And nice I'm little so pun there. I love Zelda. Oh, well, yeah. You know, this is just throwing it in. Uh, so I know Patrick is super duper into Final Fantasy and, and Zelda as well. But I think of these two, I'm a little bit more into Zelda than Final Fantasy. So I think this is better for me. But I wanted to start off by kind of getting a gauge for uh, your intro with the series and where you might have started. So where was your first your first romp in the uh, the Hyrule area? Yeah, yeah um, Legends of Zelda for me, I've played just as long as Final Fantasy. And you you know, I'm not like a one trick pony gamer. I'm by no means just RPGs or, you know, just survival horrors. I've, I've dabbled and I would say Legends of Zelda is definitely um, a series that I swear by. Um, mm. On my wall behind me right now, I have several Legends of Zelda posters and paraphernalia. Uh, and it's really funny Nerd. because, yeah, <laughs> um, one of the requirements for Scott marrying me, um, one was to beat a Final Fantasy game, which he's still yet to do. I don't actually think our marriage is valid. Your marriage but, <laughs> isn't old. Yeah. But, but the other half of our marriage requirements was to beat a Legends of Zelda game, which he actually did, and he beat A Link Between Worlds um, before we Ooh. got married. And he, I mean, he did a great job. He loves Zelda. We call it Gelda. If he was a Pokemon, his name would be Bagelda. Like, we're pretty <laughs> big. But my first entry point for Legends of Zelda... Um, was actually in childhood. Um, I remember playing Legends of Zelda, the the very first entry when I was three. So literally one of my earliest memories at a neighbor's house. And it's kind of funny because Legends of Zelda, I think, is a couple months older than me. So we're yeah, probably ba- we're basically twins almost. I mean, um, that's why I like Mega Man so much. We're like the same. Uh, so yeah. So y- you get it. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've played every single main entry of Legends of Zelda, aside from the Game Boy Color, Oracle of Seasons, and Oracle of Ages, which, I mean, like, I I wish. Yeah, I know they're they're great games. I think at that point, um, I was probably poor, so I just didn't Mm -hmm. have it. And I think it was hard to sell me on, like, two separate games that probably could have been on the same cartridge. Oh, um, but yeah, those are the only two that I haven't played. So I, I mean, I've played them all as they release. Uh, I love the series. If they do a remaster, I'm there for it. I just I do mm. think it is one of the great ones. And I think it is something that a lot more people are familiar with than something like Final Fantasy. But how about you, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I think um, thinking of the ones I haven't played, I think the big one I haven't played so far is Skyward Sword. I've oh, never played but Skyward it's Sword, just it's, which is it's so good. Like people rip it, yeah. on it for the controls, but like, we'll, yeah, we'll get in there in the conversation. I but to, I just so I love that one so much. I know. I know. I, I need to. And um, chronologically, it's technically the first in the it's series. Technically the first one. I know it's true. Uh, but the first one I did play was uh, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, because that's what my brothers had on the NES. So I played that one first. The least and... Zelda Zelda. <laughs> Oh my god, I still love that game. And I understand why it's the least Zelda-like, but it's still really fun. Yeah. I think it's a, it's a great game for what it is. And uh, that was my first starting intro into it. And um, I think, to go a little tangential... Tangential? Tang- tang- tan- tan- tangential. Tangential to that. Uh, my brother also had the first Dragon Quest, uh, Dragon Warrior, on the NES. So I combined Zelda and Dragon Warrior, and I think that's why I really liked the series. And then I played Zelda 1 after the fact. And I was like, okay, this is this is what I like. But Zelda 2 was my like my first intro. And ever since then, I've been super duper into it. It's definitely like that weird second child. uh, Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of like playing Mario 2 where, you know, like Mario 2 is nothing like Mario 1. 
Um, mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that it's a bad game. It's just a weird, different game. And it stands out completely different from the rest of the series. And Zelda 2 is the exact same thing. We're like, you know, it by no means is bad. It's just different. And like you said, there were a lot of different RPGs that were taking Um, people's interest because you know there weren't really rpgs as we know them today so it was kind of like legends of zelda's or nintendo's attempt to make legends of zelda an rpg yeah yeah i totally and i would i would love to get a zelda 2 remake because i feel like fans just they just need to have it i i don't i mean like nothing super duper important happens story-wise in that game if you're looking at like the timeline but i just think it's fucking fun and i think that we should keep playing it and enjoying it um well so why do you think people play Zelda games then aside from why you want that game to be remastered? Like what is it to you that brings people into this series? Yeah, I think it's, I, I feel like Nintendo has a few, uh, I don't know, tentpole flagship game series and they all kind of fit into different genres. Uh, obviously Mario adventure platformer. You can look at Metroid, the space shooter and Zelda is like the sci-fi or the science fiction, the like fantasy adventure. And I think that that's what makes it stand out is that you get this fantasy adventure. And on the NES, this is very unique because you didn't have games that could save your progress or had like multiple hours to play them or had a con- like a continuing story. So I think it, it's it's that idea. It's, it's those elements that we now take for granted as gamers because everything has that. Uh, excuse me. And having that as a video game experience when you were younger or growing up stood out because it wasn't just falling blocks in Tetris. It was battling to save a princess it was defeating these ugly tree monsters like it was all these things that you want that you couldn't do in in other video games it was just so different and so fun and i was pretty much kind of a nerd growing up i loved lord of the rings i mean i watched anime and pokemon and all these things so i liked that sort of action adventure feeling and having games like that really just resonated with me i would assume you're kind of similar in that yeah i would say if i'm thinking back about like the starting points i think that like uh, the starting point of legends of zelda it Mm. is you know an epic quest but i think it's safer for people because you don't have to worry about math um and you don't have to worry like like D &D math (laughs) yeah like and you don't have to worry about things like um concepts that could be abstract or silly like turn-based combat so Mm -hmm, i think mm -hmm. it's the adventure game that is more um accessible for a lot of people and i think that's why a lot of people played it um because you know your action is all um real time you get to explore reasonably uninhibited um and and by say when i say reasonably uninhibited i mean Mm -hmm. like you sometimes you can't progress um past certain area unless you have an item um but it had those you know how those little secrets of like oh yeah if you bomb this wall that you may not know you can bomb um something cool might happen you might get like a piece of heart or a secret area Uh, and it had puzzles i think puzzles are a big part of a big part of the series too and i know that's one of the reasons why scott likes it so much where you know it's just it's one of those things where a lot of RPGs didn't get those puzzles until like not even super Nintendo, you know, like I think maybe PS one is when we started to think of puzzle RPGs, even like the first game that I think of when I think of RPGs with heavy puzzle elements was like wild arms, you know? So the Mm. span between the legends of Zelda game and like the early ones and wild arms, that's, that's, you know, almost what like, 10 10 years years, yeah um probably so so i think it was definitely like a progenitor on mixing different elements in a genre and it being really successful so if you really needed to talk to someone who hadn't played the game you're trying to convince them to maybe give it a shot would you tell them that that it's really about the story elements that drive it home or is there something else that you think really is the, the best part of these series I think, honestly, it's just the fact that it's a simple, bright, vibrant adventure. I think the fact that, like, yes, we talked about there is in the deep lore some chronology, but you're not missing anything if you don't know anything about it. And you can hop, you can literally, like, pick the one that looks the most appealing to you. Like, if you're big into wolves, I'd be like, cool, here's Twilight Princess. (laughs) If you like being on a boat, I'd say, you know, here's wind waker um so you know so i think that it's nice to just have like an open genre that they're all they all stand the test of time for the most part like they're all still 
really good games. They hold up kind of like Donkey Kong, like, or a Mario game. You can pick up any of them regardless of how old they are. And they're still Mm -hmm. fun to play. And I think that's why I would recommend it to someone. It's like, here's a book series that no matter what, it's just good or a movie series or a TV show that like, you just know that it's going to be excellent across the board. Um, There aren't many people that are going to say that, you know, this is shit. So how about you? What, yeah. what, what is it about like the series that is like a high recommendation for someone who's never played before? Yeah, I, I do want to call out to you said that you could play any one of them and not have to worry about missing the story. I, you're absolutely right. And I really didn't think about that. And that's pretty cool because there's like 15 Zeldas. And so you might not know where to go, but you literally don't really need to even do that. You can just pick whichever one you want. So that, that's a really great point. And I feel like with other games, and you know, not not Final Fantasies, but some other games, you might need to know the story. And this one, you don't really need to. You just need to know that you're this little fairy boy that has a sword and you got to go do stuff. Right. And uh, like they, they treat them all like very solid complete games on their own yeah and 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 simple entry points like you say final fantasy which you know i love but when you get into a lot of final fantasy games you're often presented with you know this like huge immersive world which is super great uh legends of zelda games tend to introduce you that to that very slowly um Mm -hmm. you know you start out in a small area you're just typically a simple child there's only one game where you're really known to be like the hero of Hyrule right away, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that really makes it easy for people where, you know, in like a Final Fantasy game, shit's about to get real. Like you're some epic hero, you know, who has a giant sword or you have a a gun sword or you're a (laughs) you're a master thief, you know, or you've been uh, time traveled a thousand years into the future. There's always something like that. But Legends of Zelda just really keeps it simple. You know, it really helps people get into it. Totally. I think if I had to sell it to someone, I would probably try to relate it to something else that they knew. Like if you've played Skyrim and you want something similar, but not as challenging, or if you just like Mario games, but you want a little bit more action. So I think it, I think for me, it would really depend. But I think that's what makes the series so great is it's so versatile and it can be adapted into so many types of play styles. So it's it can kind of be whatever. I would just say really, if you like having a good time and you want to play a video game, just pick up any one of the Zelda. Oh, yeah, absolutely easily. Um, and the nice thing is, too, about them is you only need to put as much time into it as you want. Like it does have a version of grinding, which I would say, you know, either just getting money or mm-hmm. finding the extra things. But it is a true game of I can get through this based on skill and not uh, the equipment or the levels that I have, you know, and I feel totally. like and that's yeah. why I don't necessarily consider I know sometimes I'll go on um, a review site like RP Gamer, not us RP Gamer, but like RPG A-M-E-R, and they'll throw mm-hmm. a review of Legends of Zelda on there or other places will call Legends of Zelda an RPG. I don't, you know, it's an action puzzle yeah. fantasy game, um, but I think that's a part of what makes it approachable. Yeah. Well, while we're on that topic, because I was thinking of bringing that up earlier, that kind of pisses me off because I feel like if you're using the the like criteria to be an RPG, no, and, every like, playing, every game's an RPG. Every game, every game is an <laughs> so RPG. I'm like, Come yeah, on, man, like it's so dumb. Anyways, that's that aside is done. Yeah, to me, we, we get to RPGs when we get to things like numbers. numbers. I think <laughs> numbers. I think numbers tend to make a game an RPG a little bit more, or when we think of combat styles and whatnot, yeah. when we're taking like these unrealistic approaches to how life should be done, you know, like turn-based combat totally. and stuff like that. But anyways, back to Legends of Zelda. So yes. many moments in this series that are just so cool. Um, what were some of the like more outstanding moments for you? Definitely. I mean, like where to begin? I think that the the biggest one I can think of, like, wow, that was amazing. Uh, I I really liked the transition in Ocarina of Time from young Link to the adult Link and like the events that led to that. Oh, I'm with you, I'm remember... with you on that. Even just as simple as pulling the Master Sword out of, mm-hmm. the, you know, it's a stone in the Temple of Time <clears throat> is just a miraculous yeah. scene you know and i mean i mean i'm not e- like yes it is but i think for me like as a young kid i think i was like 10 or 11 when that game came out i mean knowing that that happens like you're go- i knew in advance from reading nintendo power that you're going to switch into this adult version you're going to go through this darker world but like seeing how 
Ganondorf basically wins. And I was like, what the fudge? And like, it was, it was cool. And like, everyone is kind of like dead and everything is so different. And it's not like the previous Zelda games. That was a really cool moment for me. So, I mean, that one, that will always stand out as being a really, really sweet moment. And honestly, probably when me and I would say millions of other people really fell in love with the series. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think a lot of people, um, when they talk about the best Legends of Zelda, they're going to say the Ocarina of Time um, and to each their own. It's totally arguable. Yeah. I don't necessarily think it's the best, but like I get it. And there are such epic moments. Um, I think it was just such a highlight on the N64 too. Um, Mm -hmm. Some of the moments for me that were mind blowing are one of them when and I know this is so cliche, like I did Google some moments that stood out just to like see if there was anything that I either agreed with or missed. Some of these are my own, but this one just when Toon Link stabs Ganon in the head. (laughs) And that was my other one. Yeah, Yeah, like very shocking because Mm -hmm. you have this. I don't want to say kid oriented game, but this, um, it's very, it's very, yeah, this art, yeah, this yeah. art style mm-hmm. that's very whimsical, you know, yeah. and yes, it's a very serious adventure, but it's also, you know, it has that whimsy to it. It's very mm-hmm. lighthearted mm-hmm. and whatnot. And then all of a sudden you have this like epic stab and straight Ganon's up. Murder. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it was just kind of like, that is the coolest thing that I have seen mm-hmm. this decade when it happened, you know, like I, I really want them to re-release that game because, not oh, totally because of that moment like it's a great game too but that was great what was another one they for did you? they did like straight up skip over it and they went from twilight princess to skyward sword they did um the uh, another one um it's it's super recent but i i really do like breath of the wild that's a great game and if i'm looking at and it's very different from zelda's other previous games but if i'm looking at the thing that was kind of breathtaking it's it's when you just realize you can do whatever you want and that that was amazing and I, I don't want future games to be just like that. I want to play Breath of the Wild too, but I also want to play like a, a traditional quotation mark Zelda game. But just seeing like, there's a mountain, I'm going to climb that mountain. And and, and be able it. to do it. I'm actually yeah. with you on that. Um, I didn't watch any promo material on Breath of the Wild because the nice thing about Legends of Zelda games is that you, you know it's going to be, a, if it's a main series game, a good mm-hmm. game. You know, it's like yeah. you, you can't doubt. So you don't have to read anything about it. You know, you can just buy it and play it. So I didn't know what I was getting into at all. And then the second you escape your resting place and then you just see how beautiful the world is and like absorbing everything that's going on around you is incredible. Yeah, it's totally incredible. And it's it's just such a testament to like why games can be art and why games could be so much more than just a me playing as a character like it, it's an absolute experience and i think it's it's wonderful absolutely wonderful i have what about you anything else that super stands out yeah um for me i think it was how mm-hmm. right a link between worlds was like you can't argue that a link to the past is like not only one of the best games in the series but one of the most profound games ever Mm -hmm. And I think A Link Between Worlds really managed to still encompass that, you know, being... It recaptured a lot of that element. Exactly. Like, you knew the sights and stuff like that. You really could have wrecked or tarnished this basically perfect game from before, but they, they didn't, you know? They made it even better. It made that style, you know, the top down Legends of Zelda so exciting again. Yeah, totally agree with you. And I, I I feel like we're reading from like a script or each other's minds because my other point I wanted to bring <laughs> out was how how fun some of the elements from, of puzzles and exploration can be. And I think the best thing I've seen of that was the the element in um, Link Between Worlds where you can go on walls and go into pictures and like become 2D. That was really cool. And I think it was neat because it just one took advantage of 3DS. But two, it was nothing. There's nothing else like that in the series. And I'm like, this is game like 15 in the series and like there's new elements coming into it and also in this old world that we've already explored it was it's cool and i i just i love that like it plays on nostalgia and it plays on me as being a more of an adult gamer who knows more about how games work and knows just more about puzzles it's just such a good move and i think that's it makes me feel like the reason i think it's a wow factor is because it makes me feel happy and like playing the game i'm like this is a good game and it's it's really 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 fun yeah i want to talk about more about some of these mechanics that were super cool and that was definitely um one of my favorite ones 
as well mm-hmm. you know just being able to a it's your means of traveling between a different world but it's your way of like traveling through a different plane like you can use it yeah. in the entire game to get around and for me you think of something like twilight princess where you know you get to turn into a wolf but that's only used at certain moments they they yeah. use um 2d link in between worlds whenever they can you know it's used yeah. so much so i completely agree what were some of the other mechanics that were uh good for you for like yeah legends of zelda trying something new or you know mm-hmm. um this here's this really cool item that really changes how you play the game completely i uh i i, I don't think about the Deku's butler's son every single day but i do think about that and it's because <laughs> i i it's because I, I like majora's mask and i really like the three-day system i know some people did not like that yeah i'm not the I biggest it, fan of, of groundhog's day games personally day. but i'm not denying that yeah. it's good and i'm not denying that like it was one of the first games to do that well it's just not mm-hmm. my cup mm-hmm. of tea i said as i'm drinking a cup of tea Let's see there you go literally understand that and I, and I totally get it i think it's why I, I probably like link zelda 2 uh for the same reason i just enjoyed it a lot but uh majora's mask three days if you don't know the moon's going to destroy the planet and then you have three days to do it and if you can't do it you reset and you go back to the day one uh i i think the reason why i liked it a lot is because it totally grew on me and it was not something i liked at all but as i played the game and realized there are unique storylines for each character that is literally going to die and like seeing how they interact with one another, how you can help them. And then kind of ultimately knowing like, I'm not even going to finish this run. They're going to die. Like, it's so cool. And then finally being able to like stop the the skull kid and stop the mask and like free that world. It's it was neat. And I thought it was just like with um, uh, Ganondorf in, excuse me, just like with Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time and how that was kind of mind blowing and, and story kind of made me feel like, well, this is an amazing moment. Same thing for Majora's Mask. And that that mechanic really, really just encompassed that feeling. Well, it is cool, too, when you think a lot of modern RPGs where you have these characters who are on a timeline for what they do in the day, like um, Mm -hmm. Skyrim, for example. You know, they're walking certain steps. They're talking to certain people. You know, they have certain actions. It really set the tone for, you know, what was to come in gaming because you didn't see that before then at all. Um, but I feel like it also served a purpose. Like you might need to write down in a journal, this character is here at this time. So if I want to yeah. accomplish this, like I need to know exactly where they're going to be. Those are kind totally. it's it's tedium, but it's also like purposeful tedium, which is which is fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What about you? What's one that stands out? Um, so I really liked when Skyward Sword uh started with being able to upgrade items without being overwhelming which i feel like Mm -hmm. in breath of the wild i know that you can do that uh but i feel like it's super overwhelming because it's also one of the only ways to really your items are one of the only ways to really get currency in the game so you kind of have to debate am i going to sell this or am i going to save it for upgrading equipment later you didn't have to worry about that in skyward sword uh so i really like that because you didn't really have that in legends of uh, zelda games before that but you know you can upgrade your shield you can upgrade your equipment with just resources that you're finding as you're going around and i i thought that was really cool because you know everybody pushes how the sword play is the big feature in skyward sword but there were a lot of Mm -hmm, other mm -hmm. cool elements like that that were added in that as well nice i need to play that game but that does sound pretty cool um, other things too that really stood out to me, uh, the hook shot, I think is mm. and it will always be my favorite item in the series. Just that because was in my my list of cool game mechanics. Yeah, too. just it's I mean from like the second or third game. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it really I always get excited when I get the hook shot because I'm like, okay, shit's about to get real. Now I can really get around the game and I can, you know, like all those chests that I've missed, all those target yeah. signs that I need to shoot, which I think the target signs are kind of silly, but I know what, why they did it to make it stand out where you needed to go. But yeah, it yeah, really yeah. made it cool. And then in Twilight Princess, you get a motherfucking double hook shot. A double hook yeah, shot. Which yeah, which just yeah. makes it, it's like, okay, this is even cooler. Now I'm like literally like uh, rappling up walls and whatnot. Um, you, what do you have to say about the hook shot? 
Yeah, I just I thought it was amazing. I think it's it's such a staple to the series aside from the Master Sword. I, and it wasn't in the very beginning, the first couple of games. But I mean, I couldn't imagine playing a Zelda really without it because I feel like it just aids so much in exploration. Like with the exception of Breath of the Wild. I don't, it's not in Breath of the Wild, is it? No, it's not in there. Um, but I think it's because you can kind of climb wherever you want to go in that game. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, they give you the ability but, to climb. Okay. So exactly. And you can't do that in the other games. And so to your point, knowing like, oh, I got to come back for that chest. It's it's kind of cool to know. It's a little like Metroidvania in that. In that aspect. Yeah, it really is. And I um, think that's what's so exciting about those games, too. I know some people would just be like, well, I wish I could get it now. But I don't think that would be fun. Like it makes you re-explore. It makes you like, yeah, some people might say, well, I forget to do these things. That's not an excuse. Write it down. You know, like you could easily yeah, write, write down. down just, I, yeah, I yeah. saw this here. I think all of the Ocarina of Time dungeons have something that you can go Some back go in back there mechanic. for whether that's like yeah. a song that you can go back and play or a hook shot and you don't you don't need to do it you know you yeah. don't have yeah. you're not obligated to do it you don't have to 100 percent those games but if you remember those things it can help you totally i think uh one other thing that i've always really enjoyed and it, it's really impressive when you think about it but i i really liked how there would be multiple levels to areas and you could like jump down into new ones. And that was like part of the puzzles. So this is most readily apparent in a game like um, A Link to the Past. And like you would have to jump down pits. But when you fall through the pit, you would get to the next level of the actual dungeon you need to go to. I really like that because as a kid, I just did not know what to do. And then I realized like, oh, my God, I'm freaking above that place. Like if I check if I check the map, I thought that was really, really fun. And you even do it to a to a pretty cool extent in games like Ocarina of Time, like in the the great Deku tree when you jump through the very top to go through the, um, the web. Skeltella webs. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. And like, that is, that's really neat. And I just, I loved it. And I, I just thought it was such a cool thing. It's not even like a mechanic, I guess. It's just something that I identify with the series. And yeah, it, it just, it just always stood out to me. I agree with it being impactful in um, the top down 2d games, just because mm-hmm. there, you know, mm-hmm. like it was a cool way to solve some you, things. You wouldn't where you, expect yeah. It. You need to push a yeah. switch below you um or you need to push, you need to push a block um onto the floor below in order to push totally. on top of a switch it really made you rethink you know about how you need to tackle a lot of puzzles that was really cool yeah and if i wanted to give one more actual item that i thought was cool and this is totally out of left field but did you ever play uh four swords adventures on game i did Blade not Dance? uh i didn't really have anyone to play with and i knew i wouldn't so totally. i stayed away from those totally and like i don't want to talk about it too much but that game's amazing if you can find people to play it with. But I just, I really liked how, like, I liked how the fire rod worked in that game. So, like, you would shoot it, and uh, anything that could burn would just burn, like, excessively. So, like, if you would shoot and there'd be bushes, you would just burn all the bushes, and, like, all of the uh, rupees would come out. But, like, you'd also burn the enemies and the other links. And it just created so much, like, chaos and havoc. But true to the Zelda, like, nature and theme of games... It's exactly what that game needed to be the best game it could be. And like it was it's really fun. And it, it just again, like I said before, it made me smile and made me laugh. Well, it's supposed to be chaotic because that's kind of the nature of Absolutely. the game, right? Like, you know, it's, yeah. it adds that yeah. like, yeah, you could shoot your fire rod, but you're probably going to be sending your allies on fire, too. Exactly. It just leaned into it. And I just remember playing it with my friends and being like, motherfucker is going to use that fire rod. I'm trying to get across this bridge. And like, of course, it happened. So it was it was great. What a good time. This might be silly, but my last thing that I think it's not really like the coolest gaming mechanic, but I think it was very mm. different and a little over the top and silly but when you play twilight princess and you get that ball and chain <laughs> i it's yeah yeah so ridiculous like or that weird top thing so yeah. i'm not um yeah let's talk about the that top chain. thing let me finish this and then let's go some of the things that didn't work uh okay, but fair. that that uh, the ball and chain is just so funny that you have it's this funny. like giant like you have bombs so it's almost like why do i need this you know mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's also so much fun to swing that motherfucker around and just <laughs> hit things with it and i remember like there are times where yeah you probably could have used the sword i'm like no i'm gonna use this fucking ball and chain you know mm-hmm. like i'm mm-hmm. like that's <laughs> the whole point of this i want destructive forces to take down those things um if we're gonna talk about things that didn't work and you mentioned the top. I yeah. didn't like the spin top. Um, the spin top. It was it was funny, and I don't know. It, it was it was it was so weird. Though. It all it felt guilt gimmicky for me in like the opposite yeah. way. The ball and chain, like using a ball and chain, you know, it could serve a purpose. But I'm trying to think of what reason do I need this top 
thing and it pretty much was only applicable in its main dungeon there weren't really many places that it was used outside of that however mm-hmm. i will say that the boss battle yeah, when you that's get what it, i'm thinking is, of when you're on the right on the side that is yeah. an epic boss battle that is so cool but aside from that you know i just i don't really think it was a great item what were some of the mechanics or items that didn't work for you uh bomb shoes uh i hated those and i love ocarina of time but i just i didn't it's like just so hard to line up in that game yeah they're so hard to line up and like they would have the the little mini game where you try to hit something to you need to get like a piece of heart and i remember thinking like this game should not be this hard like you need you, you need to into, get good jason i do i do and like i'll tell 10 year old jason to do that but no, <laughs> i did it but i just remember thinking like okay this this is just kind of wasting my time and then i never used them so it was just kind of it was kind of a waste um, I think another one, and I feel like I would get a resounding yes for this one, is uh, the directors or creators with uh, feeling the need that Link needs to be accompanied by a guide. It just ah, isn't done. Yeah, okay. Like, it just isn't done well. well. That, that actually leans into my second point. I think something that didn't work, and it, it got worse later, is that Link doesn't talk. And I think that that's probably why. They need someone that can talk for him. And it's rough. I think that Link not talking in the beginning made a lot of sense. And so you need Navis and guides and, and Vise and all that. But like, So I think it uh, depends Breath on how it's done. Because if we're talking about something like um, Navi or mm-hmm. uh, Fee from Skyward Sword, like there are just so many memes on them. And they're so true. Like they're just incessant. They don't stop. But I don't. Uh-huh. But I think Midna was a good one because she didn't really like yeah she's with you when you're in wolf form you know like it Mm -hmm, it it mm kind of it kind of made sense why she was there i i I think the best guide is um the boat from oh yeah the red lion or something. yeah because i mean you know he really only tells you things a if you're stuck and you like choose the option to like telepathically talk to him but b just when you're on the boat he's just kind of like hey this is what you need to do <laughs> reminiscent yeah, yeah, yeah this is what you need to do here or this is what this island is he's not this hovering obnoxious presence that's with you the entire time so, but so like i just don't i don't i don't think it's it's needed but i get what you're saying it does kind of break up the the silence yeah the silence mm-hmm. all the yeah, yeah. and what yeah <laughs> totally i think the other the other call out that i just i thought that things didn't quite work as well as they wanted um i never really liked the lens of truth and i think it was because it just functionally didn't work that well in the 64 version but like they fixed it in the the 3ds version because it was like easier to equip it um i think that it was just the idea was developers had a lot of great moments and things that they could do but the system held them back so it didn't quite work as well as it could have and like you, you could say too, like Skyward Sword on the Wii didn't have the best sword play, but like it's probably better on the Switch. Um, so I think it's stuff like that where I appreciate the attempt to move forward, but it wasn't the greatest. In the actually, people are saying that the sword play is worse on the Switch than it is on the oh really the Wii. Oh damn! I just I just assumed it would be better. My bad. I'm good. <laughs> um, the last item for me that really just like made me turn my head was when you get a slingshot for adult link and you know like link is known for bow and arrows you know it's like his main item to me it makes sense for kid link to have a slingshot right away wait which which adult link has a slingshot um he gets a slingshot in twilight princess for oh yeah for sure (laughs) yeah 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 and then i guess you have one in no you don't have one in breath in breath of the wild in um link to the past what other one i think skyward sword i'm not don't quote oh. me on that one i'm not 100 okay. percent sure but definitely in twilight princess it's just like twilight just princess give me the yeah bow like yeah you get it later like if, I, yeah. if i'm not a kid like and i i love how in ocarina of time it's one of the items that you don't take with you you don't take with you because it just doesn't make sense like why would this adult man be fighting monsters with a slingshot but like people why would i shoot rocks when i could shoot fucking arrows but people (laughs) but uh, conversely like people would be like why is this little kid using this bow he shouldn't have i mean he has a sword but you know but like yeah Yeah, yeah. why would he have why would he have this so i I like how they Mm. did it there 
So let's change gears from items and mechanics and maybe talk about actual characters here. So what are some of your best designed characters in the series? I, I think I can start here and I'm going to go super recent and super cliche. Well, hang on. I was going to say, really... it's kind of funny when we oh. talk about best design characters, just because it's not a game that you would think of playing for its characters, but there are some decent characters that are in here. Yeah, totally. And and I'm going to take the big one out of here now. And I, I really like Zelda. And I think that she's has been kind of a damsel in distress, but she's evolved throughout the series to be more and more relevant and important. She, I mean, she's the only the, one who ever really evolves because Link is always the same. Yeah, Link is always the same. And like, yeah, looking at Zelda from, uh, let's just say, Ocarina of Time, where she has a really great role. She's a very strong character. She fights for her people. And then evolving her into, let's just forget she was a train once, evolving her into um zelda from breath of the wild and she's like a bad did you just say she, she was a train kingdom. once yeah she's like the spirit and spirit track no she's not this is her isn't she's it? not the train isn't she the train she's like part of the train no well she's like is it no wait okay hang on because she's like she's like a ghost in that yeah game. she's a she's a ghost but she's not the train oh but she's like with the train no, no? <laughs> I, Am I, 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 I literally just I literally just played it a couple of months ago. She like she's your guide in that game and it's it's great. But like she's not the train. I thought she was like connected to the train somehow. No, whatever happens to her at the beginning of the game, she just basically yeah. loses her body. Oh, well, let's leave this in because it's funny. oh, I'm going to so, <laughs> I anyway, planned on it <laughs> uh, anyways. And then you, you, you after she's not a train and then she becomes Zelda in Breath of the Wild. I think she's she's awesome. And she's a good representation of a, 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 an amazing person, like let alone a, a female. Like this is what we should be representing anyways. And it's so cool. And like, I want to see so much more of her. And I don't really give two shits about Link in Breath of the Wild. I want to see what what is Zelda doing? How is she stopping the calamity? Well, I think that's so one of the reasons cool. why this series is named after her and yeah, not yeah, yeah. Link, because she really is the standout. And I had her too. I think when she was done best is when she's Tetra in oh, yeah. um, Wind, Waker. Wind Waker. Because yeah. you A, like I legitimately didn't know that yeah, you same, know that ends same. up being Zelda, but you know, she's a very strong, adventurous female, you know, like, totally. it, you, I honestly think that they could have completely inverted that game. And I know that there is the Tetra's trackers game afterward. But mm -hmm. I mean, like they could have done the full Legends of Zelda game with Tetra as the main character and then finding out that you're you're you're, you're Zelda like yeah. and I think that that could have been the complete game like and it, it, it just it, like she's just such a strong character it's just such a relevant character um and very let's, expressive let's think about how much how much cooler she would have been if she were actually also a train i mean that <laughs> been amazing. um another character who i think is really strong and i know that a lot of people might disagree with this one but i actually really like midna um oh, yeah. i like how she's mm -hmm. a different uh she makes her presence known in one game and that's that's impressive yeah is she like she's only in one game and yet you know here we are saying that she's a standout and the reason she's a standout for me is because she's just so atypical from the females in the series where like she's bossy and she's annoying in a different way she's like a little sister annoying mm -hmm. um but i think <laughs> you know, she fits the role of the guide a lot better because there's a reason she's telling you what to do and where to go. You know, she has a lot to lose because of what's happening to her realm where, you know, the other guides are like, I'm a sword or I'm a fairy. Like this one's like, <laughs> I'm <a> no, <laughs> I'm leading you to save my realm, you know? So I, mm -hmm. sh she's a really big standout for me. Cool. Uh, another one I'm looking at too, and it's, I wanted to pick one that was I was going to pick like Ganondorf because like he's pretty cool, but I picked Zelda. Uh, so to pick someone else a little bit lesser than that, I like the villain Vati um, from uh, Minish Cap and then also the Four Swords ones. I just I like that character's backstory. It's it's pretty tragic and left. I don't know, like rejected. And I think it's it's neat and it adds another kind of breath of fresh air to the series that was kind of fighting the same enemy Ganon all the time. And I, I like that that villain followed multiple games in essentially the same sort of timeline and i i liked it i liked that nintendo tried something different and it was still lighthearted and, and child friendly but it was dark enough for you to be like this guy's bad and i have to stop him 
but I just I thought he was well written and, and made me enjoy Minish Cap. And then I like seeing him in Four Swords when I caught my friends on fire. It was great. I'm with you on the notion of like villains that aren't Ganon. I don't think there's anything wrong with Ganon, but that's the one thing mm-hmm. that is hard about this series is he does not evolve. He's pretty much been the same thing throughout yeah. just like this malevolent force and he's kind of like dracula in castlevania he just keeps coming yeah. back and you're like really? and that's why we actually like bowser is a lot more of an exciting villain than mario sorry than uh ganon because there are so many different layers to bowser and we get to see him evolve um uh, like we're yeah. almost semi rooting for him in a way yeah uh, exactly. but like ganon <laughs> We're not. And I was going to say, like, my villain stand out um, in terms of main villains. I did like Vati, uh, but uh, mm-hmm. Girahim from uh, mm-hmm. Skyward Sword is a very yeah. exciting villain compared to Ganon. Like, he's just so intimidating, uh, but it's in a completely different way because he's just mentally fucked up. Like, he does yeah. some crazy things. Like, there's some really funny things with his tongue that he does. <laughs> um, he's one of the first bosses in the game. And I actually like that too, where you know that this is someone who you're going to be fighting somewhere close to the end. Um, and you fight him yeah. multiple times, but it's, it's in a really intimidating boss battle when you, when nice. you fight him if for the first boss, it's actually really cool. Um, so I feel like he really sets the tone of what a different villain can be in Legends of Zelda and what a good villain can can be um i would have liked to have seen more zant from twilight princess as well twilight princess but you, just, mm-hmm. you know unfortunately you just really see him at the end but that battle when you fight him yeah. too is pretty exciting that's pretty fun yeah. um definitely how about, oh man if i'm thinking i was gonna say like how about ahead. some some more bosses like uh, some bosses yeah i was gonna say the same thing i feel like the the first big standout boss for me is actually from the first game i played which was zelda 2 and i liked the the first dungeons boss um because it it wasn't the same type of game. So it's it's this character that has like a horse head. Um, I think his name is actually Horsehead. But like <laughs> how original. Yeah, he has how original, exactly. But like he has a club, so he's always swinging a club around, so you can't get close to him. So your normal attacks of just poking him like won't work. So you have to jump and hit him on the head, but you have to time it right so that you like don't get hit by his club. I just excuse me. It it just stood out to me as a well designed character to evolve how I play the game. Cause then later on characters also have those abilities like you have knights that can only be hit on the head and it was just it was smartly done so i think that uh that was a that was a standout to begin with even though that's a really weak entry that's where i wanted to start um okay well i'll throw out some good ones since yours was kind of boring wow uh, okay <laughs> whatever i'm gonna i'll be over here um bongo bongo scared the shit out of me as a kid oh, yeah. um from ocarina of time he's the like the spirit temple boss yeah and uh ast- asterisk that is the only good use of the lens of truth yeah so. it, and I, that's a part of the reason why but he looks scary as fuck um mm-hmm. like he, i know that format of a boss of like shooting the hands and then shooting the, the hands eye, AI, yeah. appears in not only legends of zelda but a lot of other games but i feel like that was a very creepy take on it in fact i think there are at least three bosses in legends of zelda that do that that do yeah. that yeah yeah but so. it's still like that was a really creepy one for me and then another one that was really standouty um was Kalaktos from skyward sword skyward sword I've heard that has name. a yeah. lot of really good bosses i think there's only like one derpy boss but a lot Mm -hmm. of the bosses are really good and this guy is just basically this mechanical six-armed structure with huge swords and you get you get this like whip like item that you yank his arms off with him and then you get to beat him with his own like (laughs) bladed arms and the epic music is going as you're hitting him it's it's a really cool boss like you, you just get a good good vibe from it nice i feel like i could also insert any boss from ocarina of time because i just loved that game but i think if i had to pick one that really stood out as this is a really cool boss was uh king dodongo i'm really happy you didn't say phantom ganon because i was about to throw a punch all the way to california at you phantom ganon is cool ow Uh, phantom (laughs) ganon's cool but i i don't know but king dodongo i thought was neat just because it it's this massive lizard dragon and you're this little person (laughs) and so it was it was really fun to to play through that and it it felt like epic and after um the great deku trees boss and and then playing this one it was just so much more wow this this scale has just uh, jumped up so much and and it was great and then it was followed up by even even cooler things like jabu jabu and and i guess i'll skip over phantom ganon 
but like uh volvagia i think is the name of the dragon i mean a whack-a-mole dragon like this is so yeah. fun and it was it was i cool. like that boss cool. okay mm-hmm. let's wrap it around a few things because we've been talking for a little bit okay um and i, I want to get through some of these things kind of fast uh sure so first which game is the best entry point in the series Oh, like the best place to start if you're a newbie? Yes. Uh, I would say avoid Breath of the Wild because I don't think it's super Zelda. I would agree with you. Place to start totally there with if you, you want a good game. I think if you wanted to get the best experience for Zelda, it's got to be linked to the past. Um, I said if we're talking handhelds between worlds hmm. and if oh, we're totally. talking console games, Ocarina of Time would probably be the best. It's solid. It's solid. I feel like if no matter who you ask, there's going to be people that like 2D Zeldas and 3D Zeldas. And I feel like, yeah, those are the places to start. All right. Still rapid rounding. Which game has the best music or the best soundtrack? This is very challenging. Um, I had to I had to debate between I had to debate between Ocarina of Time and Link to the Past. And I picked Link to the Past again. So many, so many bops as the kids would the, say. All the bops. Um, I actually said Spirit Tracks and Wind Waker. Um, especially playing oh, Spirit Tracks good. so recently, it it again like bop like the train song is a really fun, <laughs> catchy tune. It's catchier than it should um, be. <laughs> and Wind Waker, the the first like town, the island that you're on, like it's just, like it's it's yeah, it's yeah. all it's all magical. But like that's a super magical one. Ugh, it's true. It's, it's okay cool. which game should no one play okay so we we said before we started this that we're going to rule out the cdi correct games yeah from so yeah if, so, so if you're a hardcore gamer we're them. not going to go into those and you know what those are but we're going to go with something that like is yeah. a little less obvious what would you say is the you, you probably don't need to play this one i uh, honestly i love zelda 2 but i don't think you need to play zelda 2. right there with I you i think that it's yeah, it's not doing anything for the series. And that's why it needs a remake is because it's a fun game. It's just not it's the least Zelda of Zeldas. Yeah, it, it's the coronavirus of, of Zelda. <laughs> the coronavirus. Yeah. And like, I, I just I think it's so harsh. Like, it's not that it's it's the it's the coronavirus. If you are fully vaccinated and you have mild symptoms, like you don't like it that much. But it, it like you get if you it, go back, you if you listen to it. our Final Fantasy episode, it's the funny thing about two is because there's another two yeah. where something mm. different happened. And like, it's just so Final Fantasy two is just so obscurely different than the rest of them. Um, and then this one as well, like this is just a game where it's OK if you don't play this one. But also it has a lot of redeeming qualities at the same time. Mm. It's just not the same experience. You know, caveat about Final Fantasy is I feel like thinking about it, every Final Fantasy that has a two in the title isn't that good. Uh, 10-2. 10-2 is good. 10-2. Uh, I mean, comparatively, it's okay. No, 10-2 is uh, really good. And 13-2 is better than 13, in my opinion. Yeah, but when, I mean, when it's not that low. Anyways, we'll keep going. Yeah, you'd have to play these games to know, Jason. <laughs> I did not play 13 or 13-2. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what game is the unsung hero? Uh, you go first on this. Yeah, one. so for me, it's Spirit Tracks all the way. It's super underrated. Mm-hmm. I think that the drawing controls are super cool, and they're a lot easier to pull off. And the dungeons, um, so it's kind of split. There are dungeons that you do just as Link, and then there are dungeons that you get to do with the Spirit Zelda, and you get her to inhabit yeah. this um giant like uh knight's knight's armor, armor. Mm-hmm. um and the marriage of those things is really cool and then the game does a good job of not explaining how to do puzzles which is nice like <laughs> there are some times where you you don't think about how you would have to use zelda in order to get these things get through stuff. yeah and yeah. they're not there a lot of them are just optional things but yeah that would be that's my unsung hero if you get a chance to pick up that game i would say get it before you can't get it anywhere Totally. I think uh, for mine, I had to I had to edit what I was going to do because I was like, wait a minute. I was going to say any of the the portable Game Boy ones, but they did remake uh, Link's Awakening. So I'm going to rule that one. out. So we're really just looking at the the seasons. So Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages, two solid games. And I think that people kind of just forget about them because they're not really showing up anywhere else like their mechanics basically borrow from Link to the Past settings, which is great. It's we've already established that's a wonderful time. But like they just they don't do a lot else. And I think people just kind of forget. But those are those are two great games that 
should be played together to get the full story, but you could play just one and be good. Well, they they uh, just have cool concepts of like you get to change the seasons and you get to change the time period. Yep. Like if you like a game like Chrono Trigger, you would really like yeah. Oracle of Ages. You know, like it's just mm-hmm. I think it's mm-hmm. really it's a really cool mechanic. I'm I'm with you there. I wish I know enough about them to know that they're good. I just wish I had played them. Yeah, I'm hoping that Nintendo will do something for some anniversary and they'll re-release those. Um, I was also going to throw in Minish Cap, but I feel like that game is pretty well regarded, so it's not too bad. So just we'll go with Oracles sure. for sure. All right. Uh, still rapid rounding to get through some of our points. Um, <laughs> what is a spinoff from the main series that you think is something that deserves um, a dis- like discussion or qu- a quality talk? Yeah, I I already talked about it earlier, but Four Swords Adventures is a great game. And I think that limiting it to uh, having to have Game Boy Advances and Link Cables really hurt it. Um, There was a re-release, I want to say, on the DS or 3DS, something like that. It's super fun. Um, It's very short, but if you have multiplayer Zelda, it's it's really great. And I think they tried to emulate it with Triforce Heroes, oddly with just three people, Um, but it's not as good. So I think multiplayer Zelda is great, and I'd love to see it come back. So Four Four, Four Swords Adventures tongue twister is is a really good oh one. yeah I, I i i know a lot of people fan about that game yeah what about you oh cadence of hyrule which is something that anyone can mm. get on the switch Never yeah that one so yeah. there's a game called crypt of the necrodancer which is a roguelike mm. uh like almost ddr as rhythm, rhythm game, game. Yeah. um <laughs> and they did a legends of zelda spin on one of their entries and i'm like oh i wasn't that great at uh crypt of the necro dancer so i don't know if i'm gonna like this but i got it anyways and like it's mm-hmm. it's a lot more accessible and it's easier than crypt of the necro dancer and it's fun That's it's good. very original legends of zelda um and you can pick it up and play it multiple times because it's going to be different each time you play it uh and, and you like move and attack with the beat is yeah that it so is like that? there there is a beat which is all of the legends of zelda tracks and you just basically hop your character on a grid um and anytime if you like miss the beats the enemies get a free turn and if they're next to you or if you're in their attack pattern then they can hit you um but you if you mm. keep to the rhythm then you can keep moving and and hit them it's really cool and you can play as zelda in that one or hey. which i did or the main character from uh Crypt. Yeah, from Crypt. Mm-hmm. So nice. Okay, we can slow it down a little bit because we're reaching the end of our discussion. Brr-brr-brr. I think this one is worthy of getting into really deep. So, big topic because everyone always needs to know like what someone thinks the best of the best is. So, if we had to group the main series games by maybe system generation or ge- i yeah. would say generation probably is easier because you know some systems had more zeldas than others which yeah. would yeah. win so i'm gonna go through the groupings just so the listeners have an idea of what like what we're gonna group together so mm-hmm, there are six mm-hmm. groupings that i i thought of um and i try to capture everything fairly um you know i try to not do it where something would be really outside the grasp of when another game came out but um so there's the ogs the ogs would be oh sorry these are the og console and when i say console i mean like something that you plug into a tv um yeah uh that'd be zelda zelda 2 and a link to the past the Mm -hmm. og handhelds would be awakening seasons and ages um mm-hmm. little side note while we're doing this too i did not do any re-releases so if something got I even got the, oh, for yeah, sure, the for hd sure. remake i just didn't even count it um og 3d which ocarina time and majora's mask and then the middle 3ds were wind waker and twilight princess middle handheld mm-hmm. this was a hard one to group was minish cap phantom yeah. hourglass and spirit tracks and then the most recent entries were between worlds skyward sword and breath of the wild so for you what do you think takes the cake as like the best grouping? It's funny to see some of these like between World Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild. It's like it's so funny to see that range, but like yeah, it makes sense how you play. Right. Um. What is the best one? So are we like saying like what are my favorites, or what are we like saying we want someone else to be like these are what you? Should no, play? I think just go for you. What is your standout group? Mm. Like which would be the ones, the two or the three, because they all have two or three that you uh would stand by yeah um, i already know what you're gonna say i bet i mean i'm assuming you're thinking i'm gonna pick three yeah. 
you're gonna you're gonna say the ocarina of time and majora's mask that's probably what it is (laughs) that's probably what it is uh and like i'm between og 3d ocarina of time majora's mask and i'm also between the ogs zelda zelda 2 link to the past uh, just because so okay i'm gonna pick og 3d but i'm gonna give honorable mention to the ogs zelda zelda 2 and link to the past those games started it out and they set that formula and they are all really good zelda 2 is, is still good um, but a link to the past is amazing, and I think if we didn't have a link to the past, we literally wouldn't have three of these other groupings because they're based off of Link to the Past, and I think that's really important. Also, it has the best soundtrack in my opinion; it's super good. But I think for me, I have to pick OG 3D. I think that's when the series got hella mainstream popular, and people love those games because they are that good. And Ocarina of Time is amazing. I think it was the first game I could think of reading about that got like perfect tens on some websites that I would follow. And it's deserving. It's it's a great game. I think that it's not my favorite game in the series, but I think that it is still absolutely solid. And Majora's Mask just carries it on and does something completely different with the same formula. And it's it's a wonderful follow up game. So if you had if you had to pick two, or I guess in this, if you had to pick one of these games, one of these genres together, that's by far my favorite pick. Yeah, I think I think those are. I mean, all these would be valid choices, honestly. But I could see that being yeah, a valid honestly, choice. honestly. All right, I, I could see someone defending anyone and being like, "Yep, that makes sense." <laughs> what do you think I will pick? Um, I am leaning between middle 3D and most recent. It's de- for but, for me. Know. It's definitely the middle 3Ds. Um, okay. I think yeah. that Wind Waker and Twilight Princess show like how polarizing legends of zelda can be because you literally have oh yeah the opposite ends of the entire like like the spectrum of the game so you have young yeah. adorable cute link who still murdery though who, who will stab a sword in your head um mm-hmm. and then you yes. have a in like a bright vibrant world you know and then you have a world that's very like dark and then the twilight yeah. realm which is even darker you have a more serious tale um and you have adult link i think those two really encapture or encapsulate the entirety of the series and i know that they're not like the best games but i think they're the best packaging of games and it is really hard to argue yeah. what the best zelda game is because you know you, I, everyone might say it's either ocarina of time or a link to the past but you can always debate mm-hmm. it with other games and what they did well and what they didn't do well. But definitely for me, it's it's Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. I think that's when we started to see a little more originality. Um, that's when we tried to see some of these like, how are we going to make the formula a little bit different? And that's why I like Wind mm-hmm. Waker so much because yeah, you're on a boat a lot. I get it, but like it was still cool and there was still plenty. It's still cool. Still plenty to explore. Yeah. Looking at this list, uh, I, I I have not played uh, Bre- or Breath of the Wild. Well, uh, wow, I have not <laughs> played Skyward Sword, and um, I don't think I've ever finished Phantom Hourglass. But I beat every other one, and like just looking at it and and going back to what we talked about earlier, I know I, I know I said this, and I think you agreed. These games are all just really fun, and like that's really cool. Because if we look at the Final Fantasies, there's some games that I just did not enjoy as much. But I mean, all these ones here I liked and I could tell you something about each game and like it's it's pretty sweet. And the fact that we're still getting more of them and we're getting some remakes and whatnot. So experience again and again, like I, I can't wait. Like I, I love the series and I want to see what else. happens. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think one of the main takeaways for the series is that it's just a, a great series. And if we're doing like the games that we just listed, no game is bad and no game would mm-hmm. be a bad entry point um and then yeah, yeah some games are a little bit better than others some are better received than others but no matter what you're going to have a good time just for the love of god stop making guides that nag us <laughs> hey yes, please hey hey listen listen watch out link Okay, well, after that, I'm ready for a break. I'm going to go grab some Lon Lon milk. I'll be right back. But we want to hear your thoughts on what your favorite Zeldas are, your least favorite Zeldas, what worked, what didn't, who are the best characters, what are the worst characters, and why is Zelda 2 not that bad? I would love to know. Tell us your thoughts over on our Twitter and Instagram at HeyRPGamer. Don't forget to leave a review of this podcast, and we'll be right back. Mm, 
Okay, freshen up on Lan Lan Milk. We are back, and now I want to take a quick break from our Zelda discussion to talk with uh, Patrick about what we've been playing lately. So, uh, Patrick, what you been playing? Legends of Zelda. No, I, I'm, just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> um, I have a problem, Jason. Um, just one. I lied. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> about in the Bopper episode when I said that I don't have the time to replay games because there's one series that mm. I will aside from Final Fantasy, that I will always replay. Um, and that's Etrian Odyssey. Wild Arms. Oh, Etrian yeah. Odyssey. Oh, well, here's the thing. If I haven't played a game in like 15 years and it's a solid game, I'm going to replay it. Yes, I'm also playing Wild Arms 4 Fair. right now. But like, I really want to talk about Etrian Odyssey because that's something that isn't Which $200. dollars um I'm playing all of them, but I am starting with uh, Etrian Odyssey <laughs> Untold, which is the re-release of the first re-release. one. Yeah. Um, I played that I one. Just, mm-hmm. I just love them so so much like it's so cool to make a team of adventurers that you can name off your friends and think about going on this adventure (laughs) where you're just like this like oh that's a feature for you it it, it is like i and i always do like i always have you as a character laura as a character you know sometimes we'll go on an adventure with my cats you know i make scott Mm -hmm. like it's just it's so cool and to think of this little guild that you create and how you start doing these simple things like you know you're just oh, there's this monster in this area. It's a normal monster. You're like a regular group. You you might get slaughtered by them. And then how yeah, the, everything is the, the villains evolve into like, now you're fighting these like sub deities, you know, like yeah. as your guild progresses. <laughs> Shit gets, it's, 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 it's deep. Right, it really <laughs> does. Um, And there's just so much more. Uh, people rag on the series because it's so light on story, which they tried to correct um, in the untold renditions. Yeah, definitely. Um, by definitely. creating a story. I don't think you, you need to like that you don't need it it. is so it's it's Mm. no different than playing you know a game like divinity where there's a story going around the background but at the end of the day you're just fucking shit up with your characters you know yeah Um, totally agree so it's so funny you talked about etrian odyssey because i was just talking about that with my friends literally yesterday and we were we were mentioning how none of us thought it would be cool to be like a cartographer but it's legit like one of the best parts of the entire it really is i love it it's therapy to me to make sure that i can like draw the map of the area like i feel like i accomplished something and in some of the newer games if you do complete your map of an area like they yeah, yeah they stuff. reward you mm-hmm. in a tree odyssey 5 and nexus um you you get mm-hmm. rewards for completing uh, certain sections so i'm definitely gonna do a run through of the series again and it's kind of cool where i'm um, working on uh video for professor bopper fire emblem video and the guy who's um putting them all together his name is nin and it's funny he used etrian odyssey music for one of the videos and Ooh. i was like hey is that an etrian odyssey song he's like oh someone actually knows etrian odyssey i'm so happy I'm like, <laughs> i get it though because not many it's it's one of the no, unsung rpgs for the 3ds like it's it's just fun so wait you want to play all of them yeah again? i'm gonna go through the full series again it's okay. well i'll see you in five hundred. 500 <laughs> it's well for me it's it's like tv time i multitask really well like i could tell you mm-hmm. what's going on on a full tv show and have a handheld in front of me so we'll have something like the british bake-off going on or we're also watching doom patrol and like i just watch it and I play oh. at the same time nice how about you jason what are you playing all right so i have to highlight this fun game i played with a couple friends uh it's super random it's on the switch it's a switch exclusive it's called Very, Very Valet. What? And you've... Exactly. So it's one of the games I just happened to see at GameStop, so I picked it up. And uh, it's definitely a party game, probably best enjoyed with friends. But you and up to three friends, four total, essentially play in a very cartoony world with um, semi-realistic physics, where you're a valet, so you go and grab cars, you park them, and then when people are done in the restaurant, you bring them back out. But absolute chaos ensues. So is it kind of like your... um what's the cooking game that's just super chaotic oh like like overcooked? yeah is it kind of like overcooked but with your valet yeah. instead it's, it's kind of like overcooked meets crazy taxi to be perfectly honest but like it's it's great and like it's a small map like it's a top down you can basically see everything but they add in like multiple levels sometimes people need car washes there's teleporters and all this stuff and like uh, cars will come and they, they can't wait for too long because then they get mad and then you lose stars and like our friends are just like running upstairs grabbing cars like literally chucking cars off of like ramps to get into the drop zone to someone to get in and then the customer is like really happy about it like yeah my car uh and it's it's so fun and it it was great if if you needed a game to play for like two hours because it is unfortunately pretty short it is it's super duper fun and it's it's absolutely the reason why like you should try indie games because you never know what you're going to get and this is this is a big win 
so very very valet is a uh, very very yeah fun. indie games are well y'all like if you have not experienced many you should check them out because they're just so worth your money and you get some of the craziest game concepts yeah. from them like last weekend i mean playing it like we beat the entire game in one sitting because it, it is kind of short but like nothing but laughs nothing but fun we couldn't wait to play the next level and they do some other clever things where like there's spin-off levels where instead of picking up people you're actually trying to like bowl with your cars and it, it's it's smart they do a lot of cool stuff so props to that so game. weird Welcome back to our discussion on the Legends of Zelda. Normally, when we do a deep dive, we'll play a game where we guess who said certain quotes, but obviously the Legends of Zelda is not really known for inspiring dialogue, so we're going to play a game of poorly described things instead. (laughs) Um, We played this game, oh, when we were doing what, it was, I think it was episode three, what games we would want to be, have revived. Um, We poorly poorly described them. So we're going to do the same thing this time around where we're going to pick a place or an item or a monster or certain characters from the Legends of Zelda. Um, We're going to poorly describe it. And then if the other person doesn't get what it is, we're going to drop some clues. So we'll start. Yeah. Poor description, a little clue that might be a little abstract, and then maybe something a little bit more specific. So Jason... Do you want to go first mm-hmm. or do you want me to go first this time? I can go first. All right, shoot. I got my let's, I got my phone let's go. ready. Let's do it. All right, round one. You ready yep. to go? First clue. <clears throat> this is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Epona? <laughs> do you want to do it again? <laughs> <laughs> is it Epona? It is not Epona. Okay. All right. La... Le- well, if you want another clue, we can keep going. Uh, th- this is a character, I'm assuming. This is the, okay. Yes. Give me, give me my second clue, because that would have been my guess. <laughs> I am Parappa Palace's guardian. Parappa Palace's guardian. And it, if you forgot the first clue, it's. <clears throat> I mean, is this that horse thing that you were talking about with the horse head? it is horse head okay. which you is funny because I, 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 I like don't remember really anything of that Legend of Zelda game so see there you go I needed to call it out and also I liked my last clue my head hurts after all that stab <laughs> <laughs> all right okay I also just wanted a nay so there there we go I, it was really opponent though let's be real the real the, the yeah, real that's... hero of of time okay, you don't stab Epona's head all right are you ready mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so Jason semi-aquatic thirst trap with big fish energy towers over unsuspecting youth <laughs> semi-aquatic oh my god um thirst trap is throwing me off um god is it the i don't know the name is it the tentacle monster from ocarina it of is time? not the tentacle monster from ocarina of time Oh, okay. Um, Do you want, wait, wait, wait. Read, read, read it again. Semi aquatic thirst trap with big fish energy towers over unsuspecting youth. <laughs> uh, okay, one more guess before I go to the next clue. Is it. Um, oh, God. What is his name? Um, the King of the Zoras in Ocarina of Time? No. Ritu's dad? Ugh. All right. You'll need to know how to perform the shocker in order to ride this bad boy. Oh God! What the fuck? It's, a, um, that's a, it's an abstract clue, but I mean, like, it also relates to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's dirty. Um. Oh my God. Um. It sounds so familiar, yet I'm not sure at you, all uh, what it might you, be. You've played um, this game. You should, it, like, it is something that you should know. I know the clues are hard, but like, it's something you should know. Here, do you want, do you want your last clue? This will um, help a lot. Sure, sure. This sure. breath of the wild hottie gives all of the gays life. Oh God! It's a uh, um is, is it prince zidon yeah, is zidon <laughs> yes zidon yeah okay <laughs> or zidon i don't know how you oh. say it but yes he's oh the shocker yeah, i see because you have saying. to ride his okay, back God, God, in God. order to fight the, yes, the guardian and oh then yeah and like uh that's, he's a he's yeah, a babe 
He's also he is really tall. Because when I'm thinking like tall, I was thinking like young Link. Oh no, he's like you come up to his weight and he gives big daddy energies and like don't Google <laughs> images. Of, oh yeah, of them was it Rule Thirty Four or whatever? Rule what's what's Rule Forty yeah, Two? Yeah. Or whatever it is, it um, it's where everything has like a porn yeah, image of it. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was very dangerous in public uh, when I looked that up. Okay, <laughs> uh, all right, your turn. Lovely. Okay, my my clues are not as long as yours, so I apologize. Uh, but no more neighing. Okay, here we go. Don't get cut when you grab me. Don't get cut when you grab me. When you grab me, is this a person or an object? This is an object or an item, I guess, in Zelda's terms. Don't get cut when you grab me. No, it's kind of kind of not narrowing it down. Do you want do you want clue number two? Yeah, well, I'm wondering, it's, it's it's not like the. The lizard boomerangs from Breath of the Wild, is it? It is not. That's a good guess, though. Um, OK, I'll give you clue two. I'm a weakling, and I'll break if you swing me. Uh, is it the big Goron sword? It is not. That was my deflection one. It is not the big Goron okay. sword. You're close. You're close. We- Don't get cut when grabbing me. I'm a weakling, and I'll break if you swing oh, me. Oh, no, wait, that's the... That's not a Deku stick. Oh, it's a Deku okay, stick. Okay, you Deku got stick. it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> And then the last one is Young Link's first weapon question. I mean, it's funny because the Deku stick actually does the same damage as the Master Sword. <laughs> I know, exactly. So my brother, I remember we were playing uh, it, and I was, it was my second time through, and he's like, why do you keep on pulling out Deku sticks and hitting that boss instead of hitting it with your sword? Because I'm like, it does hilarious. double damage. Exactly. There was a, a funny glitch. that That's the reason why I wanted to use Deku stick. Uh, you, you can glitch... You can glitch Zelda in so many ways, but there's one in Ocarina of Time where you can make it so for some reason the hitbox for the Deku stick just vibrates constantly, even though you're not swinging it. And so you can just have Young Link hold the Deku stick, walk up to enemies, and they just die instantly because they get hit like That's 50 hilarious. times at once. It's great. And like people will run through the entire Young Link section just holding Deku sticks and defeating bosses. It's lovely. All right. Speak, speaking uh, of, hit me up. Speaking hit me of up. objects or items, this thick boy proves that bigger is better. Just don't break it. Oh god, is it's it a big, big Goron sword? sword? Yeah, I, I was. Oh, that's no. why I didn't want to guess it, but um, I, I honestly thought oh, that you yeah, had okay. it. My other clues were uh, the ultimate reward yeah. for a uh, chain of fetch quests, and <sighs> the Ocarina of Time's yeah. true master sword was my final clue. Uh, because it, it, it does do All the good. most I, damage. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It just it just breaks. What's the name of the actual sword that doesn't break? It's it's a, it's the there big Goron sword. There? Wait, then what's the one it's that the breaks? Sword. Oh, they're just yeah. The so thing. like, it's a part. Of... You get like the real yeah, one. You get the real yeah. one. Okay. Got All right, got go it. for it. Okay. What are you buying, little guy? Oh, it's beetle. It's not <sighs> beetle. It's close though. Are there, are there other merchants? Uh, maybe this next clue okay. will help. Can you slow down, please? I don't move that fast. Can you slow down, please? I don't move that fast. Oh, I don't know. You want the last clue? I think this is the giveaway clue. Thief, you're a thief. Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Is it the merchant from Link's Awakening? I don't know. It is the merchant from Link's Awakening. He murders you if you... He kills you, yeah, and then he calls you thief yeah, the so, rest of so the game. So you can spin around <laughs> this merchant in Link's Awakening and steal something, and if you do, and you, then mm-hmm. you go back into the shop, he just massacres you. He straight up lightning yeah. murders you to death. And if you thought it was scary in the Game Boy version, don't play yeah, the Switch Yeah, it's even version. worse than that one. <laughs> I, I did think that was such a cool feature, and I just like that it actually worked. Like, Nintendo thought of it, and they're like, yeah, okay, you can do that. Lo- lovely. All right, are you ready? Mm, mm, mm. Um... Harry Hamburger insists on retaining his title of King of the Hill. You said Harry Hamburger? Yep. Harry Hamburger insists on retaining his title of King of the Hill. Oh, God. Um, what's Harry Hamburger? Um, I don't know. I'm thinking King of the Hill is a clue. Is it one of the Lionels? No. Damn. Um, Do you want your, your next clue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you fall, get ready to start all over again oh god 
Um, Harry Hamburger is king of hell. Um, if I fall, oh my god. Um, I don't know. Okay, last um, last. Wait, and it's if I played the game, right? Oh yeah. Oh god. Um, this makes it worse. Here, la- okay, last. Okay, what's clue. the last one? This hamburger has made many appearances. But he is at his most hamburgeriest in A Link Between Worlds. Oh God! Um, uh, <laughs> side clue: He's not really a hamburger. <laughs> I figured he's not a hamburger. Um, if you fall, oh man! Um, hamburgers throwing me off. I don't. Is it Rovio? I have no it's idea. Not Rovio. Do you want me to tell you? Oh yeah. What it's is it? It's Moldorm the Worm. Oh, <laughs> from uh, like yeah, yeah. All, all, half of the handheld Legends of Zelda. All of the, yeah, yeah, the Legends of Zelda ones. Oh, I don't know if I knew, knew if that was his name. Yeah, I, if you would have just said if it was that boss, I I would have given it to you. But he, boss. he literally in a link between worlds, and I think the other ones too. He he looks. Does he, he look looks like, like a hamburger? hamburger? Wait, I'm looking it up. How do you spell M O L M O L D O R M? Moldorm Zelda. All right. Side note to this, I got to see it. Okay, because I, I know what he looks like in. Oh, <laughs> the first image is a fan art one, and he looks like a hamburger. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, I yeah, I honestly yeah, think yeah. he. Yeah, he's that, was, that was a fun one of the most obnoxious his, his bosses. Lettuce is yeah, all his lettuce you. is all around you, basically. Oh yeah, totally. He's kind of iconic though for that. Well, I mean, I guess in Breath of the Wild or uh, Link Between Worlds, but in yeah, Link to the Past, it's a, such and a I cool think boss. in Link to the Past you can actually defeat him without going in the actual arena. I think you can throw bombs in, or maybe there's one of bombs. them that you can do that, but it's just not likely because he moves around so much. He moves around. Yeah. Ah, see, using that, um, you know, multiple levels to oh, to yeah. advantage. Wonderful. That's a good one. What a good, what oh, a good yeah. boss. So uh, I got all three of mine right, and Jason has only got one right so far. So we can really see who's okay. Who, well, who's the master I, now? I think it really just means that I gave better clues, and you figured them out. <laughs> okay. Uh, you want to do the last uh, one? Yeah. Yeah. Number let's four. do the fourth one. Okay. I think this is my my most difficult one. Welcome to my humble commode. Welcome to my humble commode. Uh, is there like a guy who has a ton of pots everywhere? Uh, I mean, there is, this is but that is not 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 who this one is. Uh, okay, I'm gonna need that next clue. <laughs> who cares about the moon? Paper, please. Oh, there's that person mm-hmm. that's on the toilet in Majora's Mask, and they want toilet paper, right? That is who it is. But do you know their name? I don't know their name. I didn't either, and I had to look it up. Their official name is question mark question oh mark my question God, mark. Jason. <laughs> I th- I just liked welcome to my humble commode. I can't believe you didn't get the poop joke, Patrick. Well, no, I know what a commode is. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I just it's all good. Uh, what a what a great character that Nintendo has created, and he was actually in um, seasons one of, one of the other games. He's actually in that game too. Huh. So you can find him there. He's in, and he's in the same place. Go figure. Okay, Jason, I have done right. a person. I have done an object and I have done an enemy. So now I'm going to do a place. Hyrule. Okay. Are you, are you Damn ready? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, don't yeah. get why everyone hates me. It's not my fault. You move so slowly. It's not my fault. I'm tiered like a cake. It's not my fault. You get lost and had to start all over again. God, is it the Lost it is Woods? It's not the Lost Woods. <laughs> Tiered like a cake. Okay, so it has to be like a dungeon, multiple levels. Hmm. Oh, is it the Water Temple from Ocarina It is of the time? Water Temple of Ocarina of Time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, F that the, the Yeah, the other okay, clues I... were not even the classic doppelganger fight makes this one any better. And literally uh, yeah, Zelda's true. most hated dungeon, period. Um, <laughs> period. 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 Oh god. I, and like they made it better in the remake. No, they did it. Yes. <laughs> okay. But I was gonna say like they went from like a one to like a two point five. Uh, so they went from like better. a negative one to a negative point <laughs> seven five. The bar is in yeah. the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. But it was satisfying to be done with it. And I remember forever playing that dungeon. Jesus Christ, it was terrible. Well, gamers. Here's another situation where Patrick absolutely obliterates Jason. 
We definitely want to mm, hear. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> mm-hmm. We definitely want to hear your thoughts over on our Twitter and Instagram. So make sure you leave some of your poorly described places in Legends of Zelda as well. Be sure to head to our Twitter and Instagram for all things RP Gamer, and make sure you check out our Patreon and our Discord. And if you enjoyed listening to us today, I sure hope you did. Be on the lookout for our next podcast, which is all about trophies and achievements in Bing. games. Coming soon. We appreciate you all for listening and hope you had a great time. Now go out there and get gaming. Da-na-na-na.